during World War One, many horses fought in the fields of France. This is my short video presentation of those times, narrated by my father, Neil Pugh. Following the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand in Sarajevo on the 28th of June 1914, one by one the major military powers took up arms. As well as the men who fought, animals also played their part in the war. Without their help we could have easily been defeated. Throughout history, mules and donkeys as well as horses have played an important role in war. About 6 million horses were sent to fight in the Great War, and only 62,000 came back. The proportion of animals in relation to fighting men during World War I was equal to one animal for every four men. Many different types of horses were used in the war, depending on the form of warfare. The type used varied whether the horse was being ridden or driven, and whether they were being used for reconnaissance, cavalry charges, raiding, communication or supply. The horse, along with mules, was also used as a pack animal as it could carry more weight than the soldiers it travelled with. Most transportation lines, especially road and railways, could not withstand artillery bombardments which destroyed the ground. But horses were able to cope in the conditions and carried ammunition and supplies between the surviving road, railheads and rear trenches. Though the horse generally wasn't used in the trench zone. The role of the horse was crucial in keeping the supply line constant. Soldiers depended on these animals to transport ammunition, weaponry, ration carts, as well as moving ambulances through the day and night. This they did through constantly shelled muddy ground, which was impassable for wheel transport. Animals were necessary for all these treacherous and hostile conditions. Horses weren't the only animals used in the war. Other animals such as mules, dogs, elephants, camels, pigeons and even canaries were used. Of these horses, only those reaching a certain criteria were used in the war, an example of which is no horse under 15 hands would be called to active service. Mainly cobs and shire horses were used to pull big heavy carts because of their build. One of the greatest threats to these animals wasn't artillery or gunfire, but disease and infection. Many horses in the war became severely ill due to the conditions they survived in, and some common types of infections they got were thrush, because they were standing in filthy conditions and the bacteria began to grow. Mud fever. They got this from the severe mud conditions they had to walk through and live in. Rain scald. Most of the horses were pulling carts in the rain and had no protection most of the time and developed rain scald. Underweight. Many horses were barely fed in the war and lost lots of weight through sweat and hard work. Laminitis. Was one of the most common problems soldiers had to deal with a very painful circulatory disorder of the lamini within the hoof that affects interlaminal bond between the pedal bone and hoof wall. Stress, trauma, obesity, toxemia and hormones can all be triggering factors. Cuts. Simple cuts that the horses got while travelling and had to put up with the pain because the soldiers didn't do health checks on them. In serious cases the horse would either die through the night or have to be put down. Soldiers would often overload their horses and neglected their health, with saddle sores being a common problem, along with colic, as the soldiers would misfeed the horses. The main cause of a horse's death was cavalry charges. Soldiers would charge their horse towards gunfire and try to kill their opponent. Unfortunately, many of these charges ended in both of their deaths. Other cavalry charges ended from the horse and rider getting caught in barbed wire, but with no way of rescuing them, both would eventually die a horrible, lonely death. For the horses that survived the war, the outlook was still grim. They were left in fields as it was too costly for the government to bring them home. Their owners would travel to France and if they could prove the horse was theirs, they would be allowed to take them back. All of the unwanted horses would either be sent for slaughter and fed to the soldiers, or left to die in the field if they weren't good enough to be butchered. Of those horses that did return, many were psychologically traumatised and couldn't adapt to their surroundings, and so were eventually put to sleep.